Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch, part 23, making the mounting for the gas tank. I had to buy a smaller size of gas tank because the ones I normally use, the 250s, were too big. These are the 100 size ones. As I've mentioned a couple of times before, this is a pond launch. It was never designed for radio control, so the way that the superstructure fits was unimportant. But now I need to put a gas tank under the front like this as well as fit a complete radio control system to operate the rudder, the emergency gas cutoff valve and the regulator for the steam engine. The first thing I need to make is a stable platform for the gas tank. An easy method of doing this is to first of all make a card template and once the card template has been trimmed several times to fit into the bow of the boat then you just transfer the dimensions to a piece of wood and once the piece of wood is cut out on the bandsaw it will fit perfectly in the bow of the boat. This is my absolutely ancient Burgess bandsaw and it's fitted with a quarter inch metal cutting blade. I use this bandsaw to cut many things in the workshop. Copper pipe, brass bar, brass sheet, steel sheet. Not stainless steel though, that will blunt the blade. And it's also very good for cutting 4mm plywood. Once a piece of plywood has been cut to the correct shape, I chamfer both of the edges using my belt sander to make the piece of plywood match the internal contour of the bow. And the next thing I need to do is lay this piece of wood on another piece of plywood, draw around it and cut that out, but I don't need to chamfer the edges this time. You may have noticed that I'm not doing much measuring, in fact none at all. It's a bit pointless because the internal contours of the bow, with this boat being hand carved from a piece of tree, is not exactly even at both sides. That's why I always make a CAD template for these sort of jobs. The next job is to cut a hole in the top piece of plywood. It's important that this hole is not a tight fit around the gas tank, but luckily with the thickness of the pencil line and cutting to the outside edge, it's a perfect fit, a nice loose fit. So I cover the first part in cyanoacrylate adhesive and I stick the second part to it. A quick test with the gas tank verifies that the hole in the top piece of plywood is exactly right. So the gas tank fits into the shelf OK. It's time now to fit the shelf into the boat. I just want to make sure that the shelf isn't fitted too high and that it's easy to remove and fit the gas tank in the recess. And once I can confirm that everything fits, it's time to bond the shelf in place permanently. And for this initial bonding, I'm using some 5 minute epoxy resin. This is amazing stuff, it's a two pack mix. You mix it together, stir it thoroughly, put it in place and wait 5 minutes and you get a really solid bond. But what I'm doing first is coating the underside of the piece of plywood to waterproof it. This is most important with model boats to make sure that any wood components are fully waterproofed either by using paint or in this case a layer of epoxy resin which is possibly better than paint as a waterproofing agent. Once this first application of epoxy resin has cured and the shelf is solid in the bow of the boat it's time to apply some more epoxy resin. The reason that I didn't put lots of it on in the first place is because it just runs down and pools at the bottom of the boat. So I put one layer of epoxy on to stick the shelf to the boat and a second one to seal the joint. And now for the belt and braces approach. This is Milliput. It's an epoxy putty and I had some of this left over from a previous job. And rather than just sit it on the shelf and watch it go hard and become unusable, I thought I would put it into service on this job. I mix it together between my hands for several minutes and the resultant mixture I split into two. Then I use a piece of wood to get two neat lines, which are then pressed firmly into place down each side of the shelf in the bow of the boat. A very useful feature of milliput is that it's water soluble. So once you've applied the milliput, you can then smooth it out just by using some water on your finger. I've shown this before in several videos. One health and safety warning regarding milliput and epoxy resin Always read the manufacturer's instructions thoroughly before using either of these products. And when you finish using them, wash your hands thoroughly at least a couple of times to remove all residue of the milliput and the 5 minute epoxy resin if you got any of that on your hands. It's probably a good idea to wear rubber gloves or even these polythene gloves, but I've not had much success with those. They usually tear or split as I'm using them, and I find them very uncomfortable to wear. So finally, here are the two pieces of milliput ready to fit to the shelf. You can clearly see the milliput applied to the shelf in the right hand side of the picture. 
And while that's curing, I'm just looking at the layout of the condenser oil trap. This is just a short piece of brass tube. It's not going to be the finished condenser. I'm just using it in conjunction with the ruler to make sure there's plenty of room to insert and remove the gas tank without it fouling the condenser. And I've figured out that I can use a piece of 2 inch diameter brass tube, 5 inches long, for the condenser. This bit is actually out of sequence. I painted the shelf using some of the black paint that I've been using in the hull. And as I do not want any keyboard warriors writing in, pointing out, did I realise that I had done this out of sequence, I'm going to unpaint the shelf with my special technique, then I will paint it properly at the correct time. This brush is not quite as efficient at unpainting as the smaller one, but I got most of it off. So that's one little job out of the way. Quite a simple job, but fiddly and not good if you do it wrong. So the shelf sits underneath the bow of the boat, the gas canister fits on the shelf and there's room underneath the shelf to put some lead ballast because once again this boat will need plenty of ballast. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.